Have you tried to buy a mask lately? No, not the regular masks or fashion masks, but the N95 masks, you know, the ones that keep all the particles out. Well, you can't. They're sold out pretty much everywhere, even as the primary maker 3M ramps up production. But soon, you may not have to worry about getting one of those because researchers at MIT and Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston may have found a new alternative, one that is reusable. With us right now is Dr. Giovanni Traverso. He is assistant professor at both MIT and Harvard and also a gastroenterologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, Dr. Traverso, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us about the mask that you developed that is getting so much attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Sullivan, for having me uh, uh, on the show. And, you know, one of the things we recognized early on during the pandemic was the shortage for protective equipment, in particular masks, as well as, you know, how difficult it is to, to wear the mask. And, I mean, it was causing, you know, injuries in our colleagues. And so we put our heads together and started thinking about materials and ways of making them. And we settled on a, a type of silicone, um, which, you know, fits uh, very well. It, it, it's very comfortable. And, you know, it comes with the incredible benefit that it is reusable and re-sterilizable. And it can be re-sterilized in an oven. It can be re-sterilized with chlorine um, or, you know, alcohol. And, um, and so what we did was we uh, developed the mask, which has um, a small replaceable filter, which is what provides the filtration and, 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 and the breathing. So we did that and we tested it in the hospital, um, you know, with uh, nurses, physicians uh, and, you know, healthcare providers there to really understand, you know, does this, does it help? Yeah. Um, does it work? And, and you know, it, the, the results are, uh, were, 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 were fantastic. I mean, um, folks really. How, how do you, uh, doctor, how do you test it? How do you use a black light? How do you gauge how many microbes and particles are coming through that filter? Great question. So the, there is actually a, a test, which is called a fit test. And what it is, is there's a spray. Um, and it's something that, uh, that, for example, can either taste sweet or bitter. And, um, you know, when you spray it, there are these tiny little particles. And if the mask works, and there's a good fit, you're unable to taste that material. And so that's, it, you know, it's a, a, an occupational, uh, you know, safety standard um, test. Uh, you know, this is the way that N95s are fit tested. And so that's exactly the test that was conducted with the mask. Why is it so hard to make this type of a mask? What makes it being 99.5 or 99.9, .9, whatever the percentage effectiveness is, What's the secret sauce, if you will, of keeping it that effective? Why is it so difficult to manufacture and to create? No, no, great question. And 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 really, it's around the materials of the filter. And you know, there's been, as you pointed out, there's been a shortage of mass and you know a huge demand on these materials. And so with that, you know, what we figured here was, look, we could actually reduce the amount of material that you need for the filters while still preserving, you know, that protection and have the majority of the mass be you know, reusable. And so not only uh, do you, you know, can you now make more masks and you know, help more people, but also reduce you know, a huge amount of waste. I think we're all seeing sort of the you know, tremendous amount of waste on, on, uh, you know, all around. And so you know, this was, this was um, you know, what we're doing and, and you know, ho hopefully we'll have um, masks deployed very soon. Yeah, when, when will they be commercially available, doctor? Great question. So right now we're right in the we're actually in contact with the FDA, and you know we're working actively working towards that to have these. You know we hope in the next um, you know couple of months is uh, so that we can readily deploy both to healthcare providers but also the general public.